My name is Grant Kramer, and I'm a professor at the University of Nevada, Reno. Today, I'm coming to you from our experimental winery at UNR. Today, we will talk about wine analyses. So we will briefly cover wine analyses in the winery that are necessary, basic measurements that you need to do for your wine analyses. First of all, why do we want to do wine analysis? They provide us with quantitative measures of wine quality. They are objective, independent of our individual perceptions, which can be affected by various factors around us. They're important in measuring wine quality, and they are, allow us to be able to add the correct addition of additives that we need to prevent spoilage. So here are some of the standard commercial analyses that one does on wines. One important concern is bricks. Bricks is a measure of the total soluble solids, which are made up primarily of sugars in the grape juice. Titratable acidity, which is a measure of the total acid in the wine, or basically allows us to measure the tartness of that wine or juice. pH is a measure of the hydrogen ion concentration. It's related to titratable acidity, but it's different. The pH is very important because it allows us to be able to predict the amount of free SO2 that is present in our finished wine. The percent alcohol is very important and it's related to the initial bricks or sugar content because the yeast convert sugar into alcohol. The legal maximum for table wines is 14% and dessert wines are designated as wines that have an alcohol content of greater than 14%, but less than 24%. And then finally, we have the free and total SO2 in the wine, which is used to prevent oxidation and bacterial spoilage. What are some of the analytical tools that we have to measure these categories? Typically, we use a refractometer to measure bricks, we use a titration endpoint apparatus to measure the titratable acidity. We measure the pH with a pH meter or more simply with pH strips. However, they are less accurate. We measure the percent alcohol with a hydrometer and we use a titration endpoint apparatus in conjunction with an indicator solution to determine the free SO2. So a little bit about refractometry. The amount of solute in the juice affects the index of refraction, which corresponds to a reading on a brick scale. So optimally, we want to harvest our grapes between 22 and 26 degrees. When doing the measurements, you want to make sure the lens is clean of debris and thoroughly rinsed between tests. Then apply a droplet of your juice to the lens plate. Point the refractometer towards a light source it works particularly well outdoors in the sunlight, and read the value at the level of the line against the scale. Repeat this several times if you're unsure to get an average value. You can also measure bricks with a hydrometer. In the must, this is very important because the alcohol can change the refraction index, making the measurement by a refractometer inaccurate. So we use hydrometers during the fermentation process. To do that, you place a hydrometer in a graduated cylinder. You allow it to float naturally in the flask. You may spin it if necessary to remove any CO2 buildup since CO2 is accumulating during the fermentation process and would make it float a little bit higher than normal. And then you read as shown here where the arrow is pointing at the meniscus, at the bottom of that meniscus to determine the amount of bricks that are still there. For alcohol, we also use a hydrometer to measure the percentage of alcohol in the must at the time of measurement. So the amount of alcohol that's in a finished wine is directly proportional to the amount of sugar present in the juice at the beginning of the fermentation. The initial measurement will dictate your final alcohol percent, assuming that the wine proceeds to complete fermentation. We call this a dry wine when it is fully fermented. All the sugars are removed from the juice and must and are converted into alcohol. Some styles of wine, however, halt the fermentation before there is a complete conversion of the sugar leaving a greater percentage of residual sugar. 
these wines are known as sweet wines. In this case, we can take the initial bricks measurement with the hydrometer and estimate the potential alcohol and or specific gravity. The potential alcohol is approximately the alcohol percentage assuming complete fermentation. Fermentation can be monitored by taking intermittent readings over several days and monitoring those values and seeing how quickly they decrease. As the fermentation progresses, the bricks will fall. If the bricks ceases to fall, then we say the fermentation is stuck. So here are some examples of calculations that can be estimated. The simple calculation is at the bottom of this figure where the potential alcohol is equal to the initial bricks times 0.55. In a juice that had a bricks of 18, we would have approximately 180 grams per liter, and that would convert to about 10% ethanol. In a juice that had 26 bricks, we would have 260 grams per liter, and that would end up with a final ethanol or alcohol concentration of about 14.4. pH. So pH is a measure of the hydrogen ion concentration, as I said, which is the acidity of that solution. Alkalinity is the opposite of that. That's the measure of the hydroxyls in the solution. Optimally, we would like to have our must between 3 and 3.5 pH. You want to keep your pH low to prevent bacterial spoilage, as the bacteria cannot grow in solutions that low. However, once you reach a pH of about 4.0, you can get bacterial infections in your wine. So we try to keep the pH ideally around 3.5 or a little bit below. You can approximate the pH with test strips, but it's much more accurate to use a pH meter. Again, the pH affects the quantity of the sulfur dioxide that is needed to add to your fermenting wines to produce the antibacterial and antioxidant activities that one desires. Well, that's it. Uh, there will be subsequent videos in more detail with demonstrations of how to do some of these measurements. Have a great day.